Mac is back. W2YM. Here we go. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I thought I'd go over the ICOM 7700 radio that I've been mentioning a couple of times, last few times I've been on. Uh, just a couple of different features of the radio. It's been out for quite a while. And we're going to talk about the basic features on it. On the ICOM 7700 radio that ICOM makes, basically you got your power button and you got your transmit. In case you don't want to key up the microphone, you can key up from the radio. Of course, you've got the tuner that tunes the radio to the antenna. So you have a flat SWR. You always want to have a low SWR when you're tuning on a uh, antenna. That way the radio don't have troubles and the radio won't get hurt. And of course, you got a timer if you want to use it. You don't have to. Vox here. What this Vox does, if I turn this Vox on, I can actually uh, talk through my microphone and then a transmit if I set it up for that without even having to key up the microphone if you want to use Vox. But I never do. But people, some people do. And of course, uh, you got the monitor here. I'll show you what the monitor does. You, you press this on, you turn up the volume. Sometimes you can hear yourself come through to hear how you sound. One, two, three, four, five. This is W2YM. Anyone on frequency, this is W2YM. And you can actually hear hear how you sound back feeding through the speaker. And of course you got your mic gain. You got your power button here. Mic gain and power button. That's the usual. You got your squelch. That's if you want to squelch out noise. Take the noise right out. You can do that too. And it's basic features what most radios have today, newer radios, and even some of your older radios have the basic features. If you're in the Morse code, you got a key speed here and a delay if you like to do Morse code. This knob here is your noise reduction and noise blanker. Very nice to have on a radio. Uh, I'm going to exit this here. There's an exit right there. I'm going to exit this out. And if you push on the NR, which stands for noise reduction, and when you press the noise blanker, you've got it for depth and width. You can go back and forth. Depends if you want to quiet down the noise or what have you. And you can go down here like this. Now, some people use these features, some don't. All depends on what you want to do. But you can tell the, the noise reduction works the best. You can hear that, and if you hit the noise reduction, it takes out a lot of noise. You can't beat that. It's probably the best one of the best features on here, besides the filtering we'll get to in a minute. Now you've got your audio here. I, I personally like to see the audio scope. You press this on, and you can see people that are talking. We'll get to that in a second. This here can show you how the receive's coming through from the other person. Uh, sometimes if they got a really nice setup and a nice mic, and sometimes you've got an equalizer and EQ built in their radios, you can actually see some really nice waveforms coming in on the receive on their side. The only way I could see mine on this radio is I'd have to put the monitor back on and I could look through the audio scope. Uh, this is W2YM, Whiskey 2, Yankee Mike. You can see the patterns going through here on the audio scope. One, two, three, four, five. W2YM. But most of the time it's uh, more for receive. I watch other people's uh, waveforms on their receive from their radio. Of course, you got an antenna selector here. You can pick a, there's like four antenna jacks on the back of the ICOM 7700. And I'm just working off the first one. And then you got your SWR meter here. It's all different meters. You got your ALC, compression. You can see what, everything is going on with your radio when you key up your mic. You got the power, of course. Now, if you hold this one in, it'll bring down this whole, the whole multifunction meter shows up. You got your signal coming in from other people. Here's your power. Shows your power output. And you got your compression and SWR. Compression is when you're talking on your microphone. You really don't want to go too far 
I figure 15, 20 is plenty when you're talking. You start going too far, and it's not going to sound as good on your microphone if you have too much compression. You want to set it just right. And, of course, the SWR, you always want to keep that low. So what I do here is I'll back off the wattage. Some people do, some don't. I do. I hope most people do. Amateur radio operators turn their wattage down when they want to check the SWR. But what I do is I key on the ready. And what I do is you can hold this tuner in. Now what that just did is it tuned it down to a real low SWR. Now your radio is safe to talk onto an antenna. Of course, I'm on a vertical 10 meter antenna. Now you can watch the wattage. You can watch the power I'm putting out. Because the wattage is probably about 120, give or take. You'll see the power meter move, the compression as I talk. And the SWR should be low. Now you want to be 1.5 or under. That way you don't hurt the radio. And it's going to be tuned to the antenna that you're using. So I'm on 10 meters. This is a 10 meter band, 28.335.00. And that's always on upper side band. Now I'm going to talk and you'll see all the different LED bars moving on the multifunction meter. This is W2YM, Whiskey 2, Yankee Mike. As you can see, the compression, 15, mostly 15, sometimes just to here under 20. The SWR is nice and flat. You don't see any kind of signal at all come from the SWR. That would not be a good thing. But if you're 1.5 and under, you're fine. This is W2YM. Now we can exit out this. And we do have filtering up here. You could you can press the filter button in. And you have it all down here if you want to set it up the way you want. Filter one, I have at 3.0K on receive with a 15 kilohertz roofing filter. Now if I drop to filter two, I have 2.4 kilohertz, or filter three is 1.8 kilohertz. That's how I have it set it. And you got the sharp and soft, and you can move it just by hitting F7 on here. You hear the difference. I like it on soft. It's a little quieter and more pleasant to hear. And, of course, this in here, you can figure out where you want it. If you turn the uh, twin bandpass, you can also turn it. You can see it move up here. The sides down here... You can hear the difference. I'll move it back to 3.0 kilohertz. That makes the band wider. You're listening to it wider. Now, if somebody has a really nice setup and they're using an EQ and a nice mic like I have, you can actually hear a beautiful audio set at 3.0 kilohertz. But sometimes if there's too much noise, some people will just turn it down like this. Or... You can just press the filter button, and it, I, you have it set to where you want. I have it at 2.4 and 1.8. Automatically just drops it right down to where you have your settings here, where you're comfortable at on different filter settings. But it very it narrows out the receive quite a bit, though. So I either like to hear it on 3.0 or 2.4. Take that out. We have a preamp here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the audio scope back up. It says audio, and what you do is you hit F6. That brings up your audio. I personally like looking at that. I'm going to go to a different band. So I'm going to take the tuner off. I'm going to go to 40 meters. And what we'll do is we'll go to a frequency. There's somebody talking right there. Now, if I take out the noise reduction, it's not too bad because he's got a. It's not too bad because he has a pretty good signal coming in. But look at the difference. You hear the static in the background. You press that NR and that noise reduction, it takes all that background noise right out of there, and you can hear the people a lot better. Or if you want to use your filtering. You can go slowly, slowly up and down.
by just turning this knob. Something that you just uh, described for your antenna. And you can take noise out that way too. There's different features you can do to take out the noise on this radio, which is nice, because you don't want to hear hash and noise in the background all the time. And here's the audio scope I was talking about. They're talking on this scope. You can see how their receives coming in. I can see how nice their audio is. Now I could take this out and go with the full scope. Now I see the whole full spectrum scope. Now these lines here indicate there could be somebody talking right there. This line going vertically. Sometimes there's somebody there, sometimes not, but most of the time it shows people are there. What you want to do is take this and put it towards the center of the scope to bring it in. Go real slow. See if we can find them. Nope. Go back. That's probably the signal I was getting. Sometimes there's over European uh, radio stations that come up this far up on this on 7.283 and higher, right in that area is um, European radio station, AM broadcast. Sometimes they'll make noise too. Band is pretty dead, really. You got a few people in there today, but the band's pretty dead. Now, this also changes the span of the scope. Some people want different settings. I'm at minus 50 kilohertz right now. There's 100. Sometimes 100 is nice. Because now you can actually see what's going on here. This here is telling me it's probably, it could be CW, because I know it's going to be below probably 7.147, probably be below 7.125 for CW. Change the span again. There's different settings for the span. It all depends what you like to see, really. But anyways, getting back to the radio, it's pretty much easy. It's a nice, easy layout. You got your AF and RF knob down here. The drive. They got everything in here that you can imagine to set this radio up the way you want it. Your own preference. That's what's nice about this. It's not that complex as a lot of people think. Because once you get the settings where you want, you don't have to touch them. That's how I do it anyways. Like I said, I either hit the audio to see the audio, or you could hit this to see the multifunction meter, the whole thing up on there if you want. All depends on what you like. All right, now the bands are not that busy. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit about the ICOM 7700. Please subscribe, and I'll try to get another video out next week to you. Thank you.